Hello, it's me again, and part two of the Three Little Pigs. So the first one was the pig with the house made of straw, which I did several months ago. And I did start this second one quite a while ago, but it just uh, got delayed for one reason or another. But let's get going. And onto the clothes, starting at his trousers, and the same method as before, just a little strip of clay, cut to length, kind of, and then blend it into the top. So you just see the bottom edge of the trousers. do the exact same thing with his shirt. The shirt's just going to be untucked so we're just seeing the bottom edge again like we did with the trousers and adding some details into those trousers with some seams. Just fine tuning the bottom edge and adding some more detail into the trousers and some pockets. This was where things start to get a bit trickier. Making the front button part for his shirt. Same sort of method again, just blending the edge in and taking it around and adding a neck. Because I need the neck on before I make the collar and then realize that his neck is way too long. So it's starting to take shape and then I realised that I should have done the bottom part of his shirt first. So now I try to fit the underneath part of his shirt underneath the bit that I've just put on. It would have been so much easier if I'd done that first. But you know, some people learn by the mistakes, I don't. And here's the collar. Let's 
Let's fix it in this upright position first. Cut it to the right length around his neck and then curl it over. And I was quite pleased with this. After a bit of fine tuning, it looks pretty good. See, I was adding the, uh, the little pull marks for where his buttons are going to go on his shirt and added a few wrinkles here and there underneath the arms. Now this is where I thought I'd get fancy and softened the clay with some isopropyl alcohol with the idea of adding some texture into it with some of this nice suede material but after all that effort I can confirm that it was pretty much a waste of time adding the buttons just start off as a little ball of clay and squished on with a ball stylus. There we go, there's the third one. And then I realized there was space for another one. So let's squeeze another one in. His shirt was looking a bit boring, so I thought I'd add a patch onto the back, just drawing it on adding some stitches and a little bit of texturing with that little ball stylus which I will paint in a different colour later on. Pretty good. Yeah, so I had a bit of a busy summer. After I'd baked him, uh, it was another couple of months before I picked it back up again. And this is the old guy. Just for a bit, bit of comparison. And uh, I thought I'd do a bit of planning and Draw his face. Turns out that there wasn't really anything like this, but you know, you got to try these things. Now, getting his head nice and smooth and round, and then poke a little hole in the bottom for his neck. And then put the dowel in, but the dowel is too big, so I need to find something to make a bigger hole in it. And then get the dowel in, and then I realize I've made a real mess of it, so I have to start all over again and smooth it out. And after adding some eyes, kind of looks like a Muppet to me. Add the piggy nose, and then it just looks like Miss Piggy. Adding some of the detail in there and his eyelids. It's looking like something now. Still looks like a Muppet. Adding a bit more of clay for his chin 
giving it some detail and a bit of character to it. Even a little bit of a, a cleft chin going on there, which we find later on is another waste of time because we're going to put a beard on him. And giving him a bit more of a chubby, jowly look. Now, this is surely going to make him more pig-like, with some piggy ears. Now yeah, we'll get there in the end. First part of his goatee. There was just too much nose to fit it all in in one go, so his moustache is in two parts. Nice bit of texturing going on. Very pleased with how this came out. Got a bit of a Tom Selleck look about him. reshaping the beard and finding it's way too big so let's have another go a bit smaller mm, still a bit big third time's a charm And suddenly is looking a bit more pig-like. Wanted to give him a hat. The drawing I did started off with a kind of baseball trucker type cap. But in the end I went with a uh, baker boy kind of style. It fits more with a little pig story. I don't know why. Ah, the arms. This right arm was not fun. I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. He was supposed to be holding something, but I didn't know how he was going to hold it. So I thought I'd keep a bit of the length left in the metal, but covered it over. And the arm looked too fat, it looked too long. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of messing about with it to try and get it something right. Adding the sleeves to his sleeveless shirt. By the way, I'm using grey clay because I ran out of white. No other reason. But it is a much nicer clay, this one. The Super Sculpey. The raggy edges of his shirt worked nicely as well. Start with the accessories. I uh, as he was a carpenter, lumberjack, something or other, wood kind of guy, I thought I'd give him a saw. Piece of metal in the middle, just to give it some support. And then we'll think about how he's going to hold it. And then we'll give up and think about that later. So 
a bit more fine tuning again of that arm. And onto his sticks, because he's got to build some house made of sticks, right? So he needs some sticks. Just some very long sausages with some wood grain texture on it and uh, a tree stump because I just thought I could do that. Bit of a blurry image of this one, but uh, nice bit of wood graining on that as well. Yeah, an almost close up. And after it's all been in the oven, we start putting some paint on. Now I must have about 20 different paint brushes. And for some reason I picked the worst, thickest, blobbiest looking paintbrush that I own to start with this. But it's okay for the bigger areas. But we'll use the fine brush for the smaller stuff. And a tip if you can't wait for your paint to dry. Yeah, sorry about that. And here I am using painter's tape for its actual purpose to stop my sloppy painting from going all over the, uh, the nice pink that I already put on. And there's that patch that I was talking about. Now I was very pleased with how this came out and I didn't really make a mess of it. Possibly the best bit of painting that I've ever done. to the washes so once we've got the main coat on I'll put a watered down darker version onto it and then wipe it off so this lumberjack shirt is going to have nice black checks all across it so I painstakingly did the line and then realized it looked rubbish so I wiped it all off and painted it red Nobody will ever know. Some more fine detail painting here. Need my special close up glasses on to see what I was doing so I didn't make a mess. And then let's touch up the red shirt again where I went over it with the black paint. And here's a tip using the end of a ball stylus to get those eyes exactly the same apart from the ones so a bit more and a bit more a bit more and too much let's do the other one close enough wash to bring out that wood grain in the rings and some UV resin on the eyes and again haven't learnt by my mistakes so put too much on and then really had to panic and get it mixed over before it ran everywhere a wash to get into that wood grain on there and decided he was just going to carry his saw because I could not find a way of him holding it. Same bit of twine for his sticks. All nicely set in place. And we are done. Yeah, 
yeah, I wasn't quite happy, so I decided to uh, make that all blend together a little bit with some green paint. Which would have been so much easier if I hadn't just stuck everything down. And if you've got this far, thanks for watching, and I will work on number three. Bye for now.